Hey, welcome back to Matt's Garage DIY. Today, we're back to take another look at the Remington 1100. This time, as promised, we're gonna dig into that trigger assembly. As I mentioned, this video is all gonna be about the trigger assembly. If you are looking for a complete disassembly, click on the link above. My previous video, I completely took this shotgun apart, looked at all the internals, etc. So you just click on that link and that'll be right there. But today again, just focusing on that trigger. All right, safety first. Before we go any further, you want to make sure this gun is unloaded and safe to begin working. We're going to check the magazine tube. Nothing in there. Lock the action back. Stick your finger in there. No shells in there. Good to proceed. All right, to take out the trigger assembly, we're going to drive these two pins out. Make sure the action is closed. These pins can drive either way. Just make sure you're using something non-marring to tap those through. Both pins are starting to come out the other side. I'm just going to tap those a little further, pull them out, and then this trigger assembly will pull straight out the bottom. All right, there's my two pins. I just grab the trigger assembly, pulls right out. Good. So we'll start at the back first with the safety. This is a retaining pin, so we drive that out. And just push that out. I'm going to hold my finger over the top. There is a spring and denton ball inside. Pull that pin out. As you look inside, there's the spring. So I'll just dump those both out. So spring and ball, ball goes on the bottom. And now safety pulls out. So that is basically your safety assembly. Next we're going to remove the sear spring which is just this spring right here. No special tools or anything required. Just grab it, compress it, lifts out. When you go to reinstumble just make sure that you are getting onto both sort of this lug and that lower lug right there. Next we'll remove the trigger. First up the trigger pin that drives left to right. There are some little bumps or tangs on the other side so that uh, you want to make sure that you are driving this from left to right. Goes out the other side. I will try to give you a close up of that, but you can maybe just see right there sort of the little tangs that have been punched onto the one side. Next, the pivot tube. There is a uh, D spring clip. You can just use a pick or your fingernail, kind of flip that up, comes off reasonably easy. There you go. Some versions have this spring on both sides. Mine only has it on the one. The other side, it's basically just flush. So I'm going to drive this pivot tube through again, left to right. Got that started out the other side. Just gonna pull it the rest of the way through. Now you can see that my, my trigger assembly is quite loose in there. The only thing you really need to do now at this point to get it out is this bar. Just need to pull it out ever so slightly to clear. We're looking from the top down, just to clear that. So if I lift everything up, you can see like it is just about there. You just have to give the slightest outward pressure and then that clears. Trigger lifts out. Well, looking at the trigger, there is one more pin at the top that holds these two pieces together. That has been hammered over in the factory. Do not take that pin out. That is uh, not meant to come apart. If you need to replace this, replace that whole assembly. That pin has been kind of mushroomed over and is not meant to be driven out. Moving along, we're gonna take out the front pivot tube again little D spring clip, just lift it up, comes off. In this case, I have one on each side. I only need to take one off though, and then just push that through, pull it out the other side. It's gonna come out the other side like that. The 
this point, the carrier assembly will want to come apart from your trigger kind of housing. Put the pivot tube out. Now take the carrier latch, just pull it towards the back. That will disengage it from the carrier itself. The carrier will now slide forwards and off. The small tab right here interacts with this slot in the carrier latch. So when the two are together, the carrier latch is actually up like that. And this little tab is kind of sticking into that. So to get those apart again, you just kind of put a bit of rearward pressure on the carrier latch back like that. And then the carrier and the trigger assembly separate from each other. Moving right along, we have the carrier. This is the carrier dog. There is a pin there on mine. This does push out very easily. Uh, some models that may be hammered together, in which case you just probably want to leave that together. But as you saw, mine just basically drops out. Should you need to replace any of these pieces, that's how you do it. Now looking at the carrier, you've got the carrier release button right there. There is a pin that goes through here with a little spring. On my Remington, that it looks like it's been peened into place, whether that's just somebody else that had this before me. I'm not going to drive that pin out because it has been peened over. If you do need to replace this, certainly on, in my case, if I have to replace that, I will probably have to drill out the end of that pin to get this to come out, just with uh, whatever somebody else has done to this. But should you need to do that, get yourself a new pin, new spring, um, if you're taking that apart for any reason. Put the carrier dog back together. First, you place this piece on. Basically just matching up the shape. Carrier dog. Now we put this pin back on. There is a sort of a small end and a large end. This goes from the inside out with the small end out. Now there are three pieces you're trying to line up as you slide that all together. So you may have to sort of manipulate that a little bit. There you go, all three pieces back together. In my case, the sear pin is removable. Some models that it's not, it, it has been peened over. Uh, I've, I didn't release the hammer. It's okay, I'm just gonna put my thumb on top of the hammer, put a bit of downward pressure, pull the sear back with my thumb, and then I can slowly release the hammer. This pin, I just actually reach inside, very easily just push that out, and the sear pin slides out the side, allowing me to remove my sear. Again, no real need to do anything with this. Do not adjust this, do not modify that. That was made at the factory, very specific. I think all you're gonna do is end up making this gun very dangerous, both to yourself and to people that you're out and about with if you mess around with that. But if you need to clean it, if you need to replace it, that's how you do it. Moving along to the carrier release, very tiny pin that goes through there. There is also this spring-loaded sort of piston. So we're going to just put some backwards or down in sort of rearward pressure, I guess, on that. And then we're going to push this tiny little pin out. You can see that coming out the other side now. So again, I'm going to put some more pressure on that pin or piston on the back side. Finish pulling this pin out. And there's my release and then this piston and spring. These pieces do come apart. I don't think that you need to take that apart for cleaning. And as you see, when I go to put that back together, that's probably the most difficult part to get back together. Just because you're trying to push this piston in, line up this, get this tiny pin in all at the same time. So no real need to take that apart unless you're replacing some pieces. So at this point, that's about as far as this comes apart. There is sort of one more big pin at the front here. It's been mushroomed over or peened over. Don't take that out. Basically, I think Remington says if you need to do anything further to this or you need it, if you need to get into kind of those internals, send it back to them and they will uh, they will help you out with that. Let's put it all back together. We're going to start with the carrier latch. So carrier latch, follower, and spring. Drop in right there. Now for the carrier latch. These sort of two teeth will kind of be down or sort of forwards. Now comes the fun. I need to push this down. 
set that into place, put this tiny pin through, wiggle this around, get everything lined up. Oh, there we go. See, it's I've got that started. So basically just going to keep sort of adjusting this a little bit as I finish working that pin all the way through and keeping downward pressure on this spring. Well, I made that look too easy. That was the third or fourth time that I've tried to do that. Um, just quite difficult to sort of, you get some fine manipulation that you need to do well, putting some significant pressure down on this piston spring. To get the carrier latch into place for reassembly, push down on the piston spring, and then bring the latch up. Every time you let that go, you're gonna need to push back down on this piston. Ooh to get the carrier latch back up for reassembly. Sear goes back in like this. Again, you can see it's got that very uh, specifically notched or specifically machined notch. It's gonna interact with the hammer. So drop our sear in, pin goes in. And again, in my case, that basically just drops into place. Next, we're gonna reinstall the carrier and carrier dog. At this point, push the hammer down, push the sear forward so the two interact. The reason you wanna do that is so that this piece doesn't have any tension on it and will fall out of your way. You're, we're gonna be putting this pivot pin back in as we get our carrier back together. Push that carrier piston, or the carrier, uh, yeah, carrier piston in, hold the latch up, I've got my carrier itself. Again, as I mentioned earlier, there is this slot right there that interacts with that tab on your carrier. Those two need to slide together. And when assembled, or when assembled, they interact like that. All right, so now that I've got the carrier latch and carrier button together, I'm gonna kind of grip the two of that, sort of hold those two together. And then I'm gonna move over to the carrier dog. And where did it go here? Take my hammer, spring, and piston, drop them into this hole. That interacts with the carrier dog. So now I need to while keeping this still engaged, compress that spring and piston, and then line up all these holes all the way through. So while trying to get the pivot pin in, you can use a sort of a Phillips screwdriver, something with a bit of a point, kind of run that through the hole. That just helps you to kind of get everything lined up, and then you can start working the pivot pin through. Starting to go. So I'm gonna start slowly pulling out the screwdriver as I continue to work that pin all the way through. Do have a couple more layers at this end that I need to work that through. But I've got the majority of it done, so just a little bit of kind of fine tuning. There we go. Pivot pins through. Just need to throw that D-ring back on the take the trigger and drop this in from the top. Slight bit of outward pressure on this bar, just to clear the frame right there. Now I can put my trigger pin back through. Now remember, this pin does have sort of those uh, kind of burrs or uh, tabs on the side. Help that grip in. So this is now going back together from right to left. So I'm gonna start on the right hand side kind of working through the hole. It's not gonna go all the way. Basically once it hits the knobs or the, the little kind of ridges that are, are pressed into it, it's gonna stop. You're not gonna be able to push that with your finger. At that point, you're gonna need a block and then
tap that in until it's flush. Rear pivot pin, again, mine goes right to left. It only has uh, one slot for the D-ring. So we'll start that on the right-hand side. Push that down. Make sure your trigger's pulled just so that doesn't interfere because this does also act as a trigger stop. Just pushing that through. Just on mine, because I, I uh, don't have the clip on this side, just gonna kind of tap that till it's flush. Flip it over. I put my D, D ring or D clip spring back on. Sear spring. Again, as I mentioned, you want to make sure that your sear spring is over top of this sort of protrusion, and then this one right here. Don't need any special tools for this, uh, but you can if you want use a screwdriver. I start the spring on the bottom, uh, kind of on the bottom lug. Flat blade screwdriver, you can kind of stick that into your spring, pull down. That does help you to compress it. There you go. That spring is in place. At this point, you can test your trigger assembly. Again, I'm going to put my, my thumb over the sort of the hammer. But you can see right away that releases. Everything seems to be working well. Now for the safety. And you take your safety button, slide that in. Drop the ball into this hole on the top, followed by the spring. I've got this pin that you need to put in. There is a tapered end and a flat end. So you want to put the tapered end in. You can just, it doesn't matter which end, which way you put that in to start, but start that in. You are going to need to use uh, some sort of punch to kind of start to push down that spring inside. Just enough. Let me see if I can zoom in on that so you can see. Just enough that the pin clears the edge of the spring and then you can finish pushing that all the way through. There you have it, Remington 1100 trigger assembly, disassembly, and reassembly. Anyways, hope you liked it. Uh, as always, click that like, subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video.